smile for the camera, Frankie. <laughs> Hey, good morning from the Backwoods Cabin. I want to give some updates on a couple of things here this morning. If you remember back to that video I made, I'm pretty certain it was the one that said, uh, first trip to the cabin in 2013, part two, where I was out on the porch here, hacking away at a chunk of firewood with my hatchet, trying to rough out a spoon. Uh, it didn't look like much of anything at the time. And I remember some people going, oh, Nice cabin, but you need an education in spoon making or something like that. Anyway, and then, then I showed it later on in another video where I had done more work to it, and it was starting to come into it. Um, I kind of forgotten about it, and I run across it the other day, so I took it out, and I just kept working on it until it was completed, and it's come out really good here, uh, quite a bit different than what it originally was on uh, that little chunk of firewood. Uh, I'll show it in closer detail. My inspiration for this was from Dick Prenicky, uh reading um, the books made from his journals and the videos. Uh, and he was always making spoons out there in the wilderness. And I always wanted to try it. And this was my first and only attempt I've ever done at spoon making. Uh, I'm pretty thrilled with it and I can see what I've got to do different next time I make them. I'll show it in closer detail here. Now Dick Prenicky used a straighter grain. Uh, the piece of firewood that I used was bent like this so it had a lot of gnarly stuff in it so it was really difficult to carve out but um, I'm thrilled with it really. Uh, come out really nice. Uh, it was a lot of work but I'm pretty proud of it, just the same. I've got a few coats of mineral oil on it, so I didn't use any urethane or anything like that because I'm going to be dealing with food. So I'm just going to give it its maiden voyage this morning, and then later I'm going to drill a hole and put like a little rawhide tong on it here so I can hang it on the side of my cabinet or something right here like that. So I'm really happy about that. And then over here is another waffle iron that I restored. Uh... The first one was a Montgomery Ward, circa 1925, and this one's a Griswold. Um, it's a little bit different. This one here is 1883. Uh, nice iron. This was taken right back to bare iron, and it was silver when I started the seasoning process. And now um, it's really nice. It's got not even so much as a crumb sticks in here. It's got a beautiful seasoning to it. Just a really, really nice waffle iron. And you'll see it in action in a minute here. Yeah, so you'll see both of these in action here this morning. I'm gonna make some waffles and some bacon for breakfast. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. <laughs> Yeah, in the Dick Prenicky video, when he made his spoon, he had said, one spoon, one pancake. And it worked out that I've got one ladle full equals one waffle. It's like they were made for each other. I couldn't be happier, man. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Nothing stuck. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be yummy. This is what I mean about simple things, simple living, doing things yourself. It makes you feel great. If I was using a store-bought spoon here, an electric waffle iron, or throwing something in the microwave, I'd just be going about my business and doing it without thinking about it. But here I'm using this antique 1883 waffle iron. I'm here at the cabin with all the comforts of home. And my homemade spoon that I was hacking at that piece of wood with my hatchet. And I got this awesome breakfast going here. And it's thrilling me to death. 
if I was just using store-bought stuff and uh, throwing something in a microwave or my electric waffler, I'd probably just go through the motions and not even realize what I'm doing, you know? So anyway, I've got some good breakfast here and I'm going to chow.